Moving in to the AFC West, we have the Denver Broncos, and we have them as a 500 team. I think with Bo Nix being a rookie, I think there's a lot of issues on this roster. I think Sean Payton can elevate them to a 500 team, but especially in the AFC West and the AFC, I just don't see them competing for a playoff spot. Yeah, I think I want to say just to Broncos fans, you know, be thankful for this one. Just as, as we said to the Giants fans, I, I think we sold you guys higher than we honestly probably should have. But it, it comes down to Sean Payton. Like, let me be clear. You know, if Nathaniel Hackett was still, yeah, he, he, like, uh, if you still in the building, you know, it's, like, I'm not exaggerating. This Broncos team would genuinely be a bottom feeder. Where do uh, this? They would be bottom feeder in the bottom feeder tier. Like they, they, Sean Payton elevates this team so much that it's like I, I can't go against him. He's, he's very much how I view Mike Tomlin. It's like you you can't bet against him. It's like I don't, no matter how well the roster looks, he's going to find a way to make them compete. His scheme will adjust to his talent and to his opponent's talent. He'll make it work. It's just a matter of like I don't think he can make it work past being anywhere close to a 500 team. That's just the reality. And that, and if they can even, if he can do that with this roster, it would be a major accomplishment because there are so many holes across the entire roster. And that's just the best way to put it. I think if Bo Nix turns out the way they want him to, he can, the, the Broncos can definitely be one of those teams that is competing uh, for playoff spots, maybe next year or the year after consistently. Um, moving in to the Kansas City Chiefs, probably the shortest explanation of all teams we're going to do today. They are Super Bowl contenders. No doubt about it. Patrick Mahomes um, has won three rings already, and the roster has been improved. Hopefully, the Rasheed Rice suspension isn't there, but, I mean, they have probably have the best receiving core that they have had, um, probably outside of the Tyree Kill days, and even then, you could argue that this is a better receiving core. I, I mean, not, not on the high-end spectrum, but just overall r- rounded, solid receiving core. Um, Rasheed Rice, Hollywood Brown, Xavier Worthy, Travis Kelsey. So, with that being said, their defense loses Legereus Sneed, but I think they should be fine. Like, any reason why they won't be a Super Bowl contender, or should we just move on? I think that, that no, that's it, that's all there is to it. Like, the, Patrick Mahomes is, is as many holes as there are on this roster, which there's not a lot. There's like two holes, but for every hole that is on this roster, Mahomes just he is he's the flex what is it called flex seal or whatever. Like Mahomes <laughs> is is human flex seal. Like it just doesn't matter what holes there are. Because Mahomes will just cover all of them and find a way to make it work. And that's just the bottom line for the Chiefs. There's no other way. To, there's just no other way to put it. Las Vegas Raiders, we have them in the 500 category. I mean, I do kind of like what the Raiders have done. But I also find it like kind of hard. Like, yeah, in a vacuum, I do like the Christian Wilkins deal. I think that, old, that D-line is disgusting. In a vacuum, I like the Brock Bowers pick. And it could look really good in a couple of years, but AP, who is hired because the players like him, and I think he's a good. I think he's a good coach. I need to see what he can do as a full season as a head coach, but I think it's going to be very hard to do what they want to get done. I know they're going to run the ball a lot, but with like Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew, like I really feel like this team needed a really good, or not a really good quarterback, but even a young quarterback that they could really invest into to kind of lead them in a right direction. And without having that, I just don't see how they're uh, even a wild card team this year. No. Yeah. That's exactly where I'm at too. Like if you, if you look, but look, how about, how about this to spin it positively? If Aiden O'Connell makes a big jump, all of a sudden we're starting to look at this roster and say, this roster is really coming together. Right. But assumingly, because I'm on the same train as you, we don't know how to feel about it yet. And I think there's a very fair chance that at some point of the year, if you try the Aiden O'Connell experiment, which, which they will start, and you're really not vibing with it, all of a sudden you say, eh, you know, switch gears, like throw Gardner in there and let's try to be a wild card team and let's try to salvage the season as much as we can. That That's at this point how I view the season going. I know Raiders fans would view opposite because they're going to be more optimistic than me and they believe in their guy as they should. But the reality is as you, as you covered everything, I think there's still enough holes on the O-line as of right now, guys that need to make jumps that it's like, ah, I don't know. Like, especially you said, what, the, what they're going to want to do it's, and I just the, the jump that you're going to need to see from Aiden O'Connell. I just think it'd be kind of foolish for us to expect anything more than a 500 around season. But if AP gets that defense flying around again and and they can somehow miraculously be more than that, well, then if anything, how about that, Raiders fans that should be super excited? Because if that's the case this year, then truly AP is going to be one of those guys where 
we'll never couch out if AP's there. But like Hunter said, there's still there's still some stuff that's got to be proven. We can't jump on the AP train all the way yet. As much as I as much as I want to. You know, I do like their offensive line, but when you look at what's behind it in terms of Aiden O'Connell and Samir White, it's just like, I don't know how you, I don't know, you, I would have a hard time trying to realistically sell somebody that that's a playoff team. Like, that's probably one of the worst, like, combos in the league, no doubt. No, yeah. It, 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 the only way they get there is if that defense plays flawless how they did towards the end of the year. But again, that's a tough ask. And the reality is I just don't expect that. So that's well, just all there is to it. That's the thing is like how much did they even address the cornerback room? They took uh, Richardson out of Mississippi State and Devonshire out of Pittsburgh. But I mean, that, you're, that's a fourth rounder and a seventh rounder. So it's like, you know, I, I don't know. Like that, that, that would still be an issue of concern for me. But Let's move into the last team in the AFC West, which is the Los Angeles Chargers. And, you know, Dobbs, I had them at 500, but you had them as a wild card team. And the more and more I thought about it, we'd always talk about these teams like the Steelers, like, um, you know, the Broncos, where their coaches elevate them so much. And I really do think Harbaugh can be that guy for the Los Angeles Chargers. Does the O-line have a little bit to go? Yeah. Does the wide receiver core have a little bit to go? Yeah. Does the defense need to be improved? Yeah. But you have Justin Herbert. You sign a litany of running backs. You know the Jim Harbaugh system works. Greg Roman, depending on how you feel about him, can do productive offenses as pro- ooh, productive offenses in the run game. They don't really have an offense built for the pass game right now, and that can come in a year. But if they beat teams up on the ground, if they play just solid defense, they could probably sneak in as the seven seed. I can see it. No, if Justin Herbert has a fantastic year, that run, like you said, that run game can just be like anywhere within top 14 range, 14 to 12 ish. That's right. Because, like you said, anything more than that with this offensive line is just a tough ask because I've been watching a lot of charges all 22 recently for Quentin Johnson reasons, but (laughs) I'm not even kidding. But the big thing that stands out really when you're watching chargers is like, man, dude, like there are so many guys in this O line that are just not giving full effort consistently and missing assignments consistently. Like the reality is with the way this whole line is built right now, as much as I love Joel and I think Joel's going to be a huge boost. It's there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that still have to change on this chargers roster, especially this chargers O line. Like, I don't think they're going to be a world beating team this year. And like, that's why at the ceiling, they're a wild card. But like you said, the reality is just Harbaugh coming in. If he can be the guy that we think he is and that he has been everywhere he's gone before this, and he doesn't lose his aura as the kids are saying, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, this Chargers team could could very much be a wild card team. I think that's just the best way I'm looking at it. Yeah, I I would have to agree with you there. I think I just like what Harbaugh brings to the table where it's like, like, like we said before, it will elevate the talent on this roster. 